I'm Karen Meyer, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm also slightly terrified because I'm going to be doing hardware demos. So we'll hope that they work. And uh, by the way, this is Jim uh, Weirich. He's from Neo as well, and he's going to be acting as the drone wrangler today. So uh, I like to start my presentations off with a little story. So this one takes place a really long time ago, in a time before mobile phones even in a time before personal computers. And in this time, there was an ordinary five-year-old girl, completely ordinary, until one day she saw an episode of Sesame Street. And on this episode of Sesame Street, she saw Sam the Robot. That stands for Super Automatic Machine. And she fell in love with this robot. In fact, she was so taken with it, she wanted it to be her robot friend. And that's all she could talk about. In fact, she stopped playing with her dolls. She stopped playing with her stuffed animals. She even stopped playing with her dog. And this is when her parents started to worry. It wasn't like today, so you could go out to Target and buy all sorts of wonderful computer and robotic equipment. But they loved their daughter, and they did the best that they could. So they built her a wooden robot. But this robot could do one thing. It had a magnet on the bottom. You could spread nails out and pull the robot over it, and it would pick things up. And the girl loved it. And it was her robot friend. And she took it everywhere with her, to the library, to the grocery store. She rolled it around her house. And it was indeed her robot friend. But the years passed. The girl grew up. She became a software developer. She worked for large and small companies, worked with large and small languages. She even had kids of her, of her own. And she had forgotten all about her robot friend. Until one day, she saw a Roomba. And there was something in the way about this Roomba would go over the floor and pick up stuff that just made her think about her, her robot friend. And you could hack it, which was even better. So she thought, maybe this could be my robot friend. So how do you talk to a robot? Well, she thought about it. And I'm going to switch to first person now, because the little girl was me. So um, <laughs> this is a little bit easier. Uh, if the robots have a natural language, it's probably going to be Lisp because uh, John McCarthy is the inventor of Lisp and also the inventor of AI, so it only stands to reason. But being a modern girl, I wanted a modern Lisp with all the bells and whistles and power, so I wanted to do it in Clojure, and Clojure's got a lot of nice features. It's a dynamic language, uh, which means you don't have to declare types. It's a functional language. Functions are first-class citizens. This is just a quick example of a function defining a function in Clojure um, that would just take in a name and give you back hello, whatever the name is. And you execute it, say hello, Roomba. It's also got Java interop. So if you look at the class of this Roomba, it's really just a Java lang string. And you can call Java methods on it wrapper free. So I can call to uppercase on this string, and it comes out there. It also supports concurrency, which is great. Um, it's got immutable data structures. And I'm not going to go into it, but it's got vars, refs, atom, and agents that help it with the con concurrency. So the iRobot Roomba has a specification that you can program to. And it's also got this Rutooth device. Ugh, getting out here. Here's my robot friend. Here's Roomba. And he's got an ROA port. And this is the Rutooth. And I'm going to plug it in here. OK. So uh, there's already somebody written a library out here, a Java library for hacking it. So it has the Java interop, so we can use it in Clojure, right? So let, let me give you a little demo of this. All right. My screen should be coming up here in a minute. I can show you the demo. There we go. OK, so I'm in Emacs here. Um, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to connect the Bluetooth. So we need to connect to it. Yay, it worked. All right, we're connected. All right, first sphere. All right, we're almost there. Now we've got to see what port it assigned it to. Maybe two, we'll see. And 
then I'm executing this. True, oh yes, we're connected. Good, okay, start up. Um, we're gonna control it, and if this works, I should be able to get a note from him. Can you hear that? He, he actually played a little note, it's hard to hear. But I'm gonna make him turn around now. He's gonna spin. Can you guys see it? All right, all right, woo! -hoo! Okay, I'm gonna make him stop. Um, we can even make him vacuum, which is a lot of fun. Oh, well, there's a little dusty there. <laughs> I need to clean his bin. <laughs> okay, so that's just a quick, okay, malfunction here. <laughs> Stop. Okay. <laughs> so this is a quick example of how you can control the Roomba. Okay, so we're going to go back to the presentation now. So it was happy times, happy times with the, uh, the Roomba and enjoyed hacking on it. And then one day, I saw this AR drone. <laughs> and I thought, wow, could this be my robot friend? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let me tell you a little about the AR drone here. Thank you. It's a quadcopter. It's got two cameras, one in the front and one in the bottom. And it's even got sonar. And you can fly it out of the box with the iPhone. And um, it's got a, its own wireless network on board, and you can communicate and hack it through UDP. So, so it's got an AR drone developer guide that you can program to. And I'm just going to show you really quick um, just a program, how you connect to it with UDP communication. You uh, just import some UDP libraries, a drone host, a socket. You just have a function where you're sending it a command, and that's just a string. Here's an example of the strings that you would send it. AT ref um, for landing, taking off, and AT ref for landing. And you just send the command take off, and you just send the command land. And oh my gosh, it like worked. So I was in my uh, kitchen at night after the kids went to bed, and I was working on my computer, and it took off in front of me when I didn't think that would, and, and I screamed, and the kids came out and said, Mommy, what's going on? I said, the drone, it works. It's wonderful. So, so I started working on my own library called CLJ Drone, and I'm just going to show you a quick demo of some of the commands. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to actually show you the real demo. Here. So let's go ahead and I'll have him hook it up for me. We'll switch back over here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is connect to the wireless. All right, he's, so he's connected. So we're going to initialize him, and then we're going to take off. All right. So let's do some dance moves. Okay, so that's, that's some dance moves there. We're going to try to do a wave. Okay, and a turn around. Whoa, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, one more. We're going to try flip. Ready? All right, woo! Okay. <laughs> Yay! Whoops, we're past the demos. Yay! <laughs> okay, so we're gonna um, go back to the presentation here. Ah, okay. So you can not only get uh, or send it commands, but you can also get navigation off of it. Um, just a, a couple examples of, navi of navigation data you can get off of it. You can get whether it's flying, hovering, no, it's battery percentage, it's roll, pitch, yaw, velocity, and you can also detect tags. Um, these stickers on the, on the plane, uh, those the, can also detect off of other drones, and it also detects this thing, which is called an oriented rondel, and it can tell you when it sees that and how far away it is. So this is just a quick example of a program. We won't get into too much of this. But it can also do vision processing. Uh, the camera vision comes in as H.264. 
H.264 format. You can save the raw feed. You can display the raw feed. You can convert it to ping for more processing, which is pretty interesting, because then you can pipe it into OpenCV and do facial recognition. So this is video from the front camera, and this is my husband, and it's recognizing the, his face via the drone. So pretty cool. But still, all this was nice, but something was missing. Um, and it was beliefs and goals. If I really wanted it to be my friend, it needed beliefs and goals. And uh, John McCarthy came up with this idea actually in 1979. So his famous example is a thermostat can have beliefs and goals. Not many, but it can have a belief the room is too cold, the room is too hot, and the room is just right. And with the goal of the room should just be just right. So why? This could be easier to understand and reason about. Um, it's a useful concept in building intelligent systems. And so I wanted to put beliefs and goals in my program. So just really quickly going into it, I had him believe that he could be landed, and in that case, take off, um, that he's taking off, and that he give him a goal that he wants to fly. So you could chain these goals together to say, I want you to take off, get to a cruising altitude, and then land. So I'm just going to show you really quick a little video. Oh, actually, we're going to skip that because I didn't have much time anyway. <laughs> so, um, so I have the Roomba is my friend now, right? And the AR drone is also my friend. So wouldn't it be great if they could be friends together? <laughs> because you know, that would be kind of be like Wally. So we, we started working on this uh, myself, and then I work in the office. Of what I wanted to have happen is I wanted, to, with beliefs and goals, have the Roomba come out and look for the drone, and the drone to, to swing around and fly and look for the Roomba. And I wanted them both to see each other and find each other, and have the, the Roomba then sing the theme song from Wally, and then have them dance together. So. Unfortunately, I can't show you that today because. But I can show you a video. <laughs> so here's the video from our office of this working. So you see there, the, the Roomba is under there and has the rondel target on that, so the drone can find it. And the drone takes off, and he's going to start circling around. And this is, again, it's all with beliefs and goals. So he's circling around. And you'll see it when he, he lock, locks on, he sees it. So in a minute, he'll actually start playing his, the Wally theme song. It's really, it's really faint. But uh, you notice with the, the, the drone is turning uh, as the Roomba turns around as well because of that oriented rondel. Not only can it detect it, it can also orient itself as they go along. So this is their dance together. And he's going to land here in a minute. And he nails the landing. Yes! <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> so a recap. Robots are great fun to program. Uh, I really encourage you to get involved in it. It's a lot of fun. Um, closure is a powerful yet a simple language and is perfect for AI. And scribing beliefs and goals in machines can be incredibly useful. Uh, for an example, when I was working on a program with goals and beliefs and it flew straight up and got stuck on the ceiling, I knew that somewhere it had a faulty belief that it was at 1.5 meters, right? Um, and robots communicating and acting together is really the future. So just a couple resources. All my stuff is on GitHub if you want to look at it. My username there is Gigasquid. So we've got CLJ Drone. We've got CLJ Roomba. Um, I've got the code from today's demos, Roomba Drone Friends. And also there's a papers by John McCarthy that I encourage you to read. There's describing mental qualities to machines and just all his stuff. It's really fabulous. So thank you very much.